Welcome to Service 65 and this is for the 19th of June 2022. Today we're looking at the story of Elijah and uh, in the aftermath of his great victory uh, against the prophets of Baal, he seems to lose his nerve and an angel comes and helps him. But first we're going to have a song and as usual the lyrics and the chords can be found in the video description. When I'm troubled I can bring my prayers and lay them at your throne. When I'm hurt and bring my wounds and God shall lay them on his son. When I'm worried and the devil comes to test me once again I will sing and bless the day that I took Jesus as my friend I will bless the day I took Jesus as my friend I'll bless the day I took Jesus as my friend when I'm worried and the devil comes to test me once again I'll bless the day that I took Jesus as my friend When I'm troubled, I can bring my prayers and lay them at your throne When I'm hurt, and bring my wounds and God shall lay them on his son When I'm worried and the devil comes to test me once again I will sing and bless the day that I took Jesus as my friend I'll bless the day I took Jesus as my friend I'll bless the day I took Jesus as my friend When I'm worried and the devil comes to test me once again I'll bless the day that I took Jesus as my friend when I'm troubled, I can bring my prayers and lay them at your throne. When I'm hurt, and bring my wounds, and God shall lay them on his son. When I'm worried, and the devil comes to test me once again, I will sing and bless the day that I took Jesus as my friend. I'll bless the day I took Jesus. My friend, I'll bless the day I took Jesus as my friend. When I'm worried and the devil comes to test me once again, I'll bless the day that I took Jesus as my friend. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And she looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank, and she lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that foot 
40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Elijah is fresh from his victory on Mount Carmel and that's where he confronted all the, the prophets, the pagan prophets of Israel who served the Baal and various other deities uh, and who had the backing of uh, the, the king and queen, especially Queen Jezebel, whose name, of course, has become synonymous with evil. Well, on that particular mountain, the challenge was, before all the people of Israel, to lay out a sacrifice of a bull on your altar and to pray to your God and see which one answers with fire to burn up the offering. Needless to say, the prophets of Baal were having a bad day because, well, their God didn't exist. They were talking to no one. And uh, Elijah made great fun of them and then took his turn, prayed to the Lord. He actually even soaked his altar in water seven times just to prove it wasn't him that was doing it it was God and yes God was up to the test and he he zapped the bull and um, well Elijah then got the people to dispatch the, the pagan prophets in a most unpleasant manner Yes, don't you love the Old Testament? But anyway, in the aftermath of this, he receives a threat from Jezebel, saying she's basically going to do the same to him, and he suddenly just loses his nerve, and runs off into the wilderness, where yeah, he hides under a, a thick um, broom tree, and broom's a very thick, almost like a bush, uh, you know, you'd be hard put to see anyone hiding in, in there. Um, yeah. Why did he lose his nerve? Well, God was with him up to this point. God had a plan and, he, and Elijah could understand the plan. He was convinced that God was on his side, therefore he had confidence. But in the aftermath of the event, it's the question, what next? Because, well, it would be lovely if God gave us a list of things. Right, I'm going to do A, and then B, and then C, and then D. But God doesn't work that way. It's one event at a time, in isolation. I'm going to do this. Right, and, and then? We'll just wait and see. We panic and flail about trying to make things happen on our own strength. It's a bit like Abraham and uh, Sarah when they were promised a son and year after year nothing was happening and they were getting older and older. So what did they do? Oh, take my slave girl Abraham and have a son with her. No, that wasn't the plan. That wasn't the plan. Or the disciples when uh, Jesus had uh, ascended again and there was only 11 of them. Oh, we must have a 12th one. Oh, let's cast lots in. No, that wasn't the plan. Just wait. Paul is in the wings. It's going to take a few years for him to get here and become a Christian, but he's number 12. And we get into a pickle because we try to do things in our own strength. Now, the story, of course, continues with an angel coming and uh, and providing food and water and sustenance and presumably a wee bit of encouragement as well. So the question is, is that just a story about the angel? Do angels actually exist? If the answer is no, this is going to be a very short sermon. Fortunately, the answer is yes. Because. Right, true story of some 
20 odd years ago, early 90s. I was unemployed and I came down with that odd disease called ME. It's a, a weakness in the bones. It feels like having the flu but without the, the, the runny nose and the sore throat etc. But the, you know, the weakness you get in your limbs, that's there all the time. And I'd come down with this on the Tuesday of, or oh, the week of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. I was one of the elders that was on, on duty that week, go to Edinburgh and hear out all the arguments. And on the Tuesday, oh, I wasn't a well boy. Well, time passed and the feeling did not go away. Eventually I signed on the, the, the sick for sickness benefit rather than unemployment benefit because I really just wasn't fit fit to work. And they sent me for a medical. Yes. And in the course of the medical I was asked, could I sit in a chair for an hour? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, even though I feel pretty terrible, I can, I can sit in a chair for an hour. Oh well, you're fit for work. Um, excuse me? How many jobs are out there where you can sit in a chair for an hour and earn a day's wage? You know, I've, I've never come across one. But apparently I was fit for work. Went to the labour exchange, stood in the queue, nearly fainted, had to sit down. Just came home. Well that night, I was on my own because my, my wife and, and the kids were, were up in Oban visiting a friend, having a wee, a wee holiday up there. And so I was on my own, middle of the night. I'm aware that the, the landing light has come on and then the, the light in the bedroom comes on. And in walks, I'm not kidding you, in walks a monk. Not just an ordinary monk, but a Celtic monk as of old. A couple of differences in the, in the way they dressed. The, the, the tonsure, that's your, the, the hairstyle, you know, the round, baldy bit that they have. Uh, well, that's, that's more Italian, that's more Roman. And uh, the, the Celtic monks, the, the head was shaved right back to the crown there and it was long down to the shoulders. That was their, their style. And the monk's habit stopped just uh, at, the, at the knee. Well, because in the old days in Scotland, of course, there weren't many roads, so you were wading through mud half the time. It rains a lot, so yeah, a long traditional monk's habit just wouldn't work. So the short one. Other than that, pretty standard monk. He was a young lad. So he comes round to the, the, the side of the bed now. I can wave uh, myself up and say, "Hello," <laughs> and he hands me a key. Hands me a key. And I say to him, what's this for? He just smiles and he walks out of the room. And of course I'm watching him as he goes, going, what the heck? And as my eyes follow him, I see the sideboard at the, the, the bottom end of the, the, the bed. And that sideboard, as far as I was concerned, uh, is usually covered in coffee cups and half written songs and such like. Bit of a mess. But on that evening, it had been cleared, there was a purple cloth on it and I got up to look and there were about 12 or 15 pairs of specs sitting on it. I picked up one of the pairs of specs and that was it. It was done. It was morning, it was half seven or whatever. I'm wide awake and I'm looking about with key, sideboard. And then I realised, ah, right. It was a, a vision. Was that a vision? Was it real? I'm not sure, actually. But anyway, it was a hint. So what I did was I started applying for jobs that had anything to do with vision. And within two or three weeks, I got a job driving a minibus for the Royal National Institute for the Blind. And uh, I remember on the, the application form, after all the, the blah blah blah, the job, etc., at the bottom it said, This form 
is also available in Braille. It's a job for a driver. <sighs> right, the mind boggles. You know, I don't know what's more amazing, the story about the angel or the story about the, the application form. <clears throat> but anyway, yes, angels are still in business. That job, by the way, as I said, I got it and, and it was mornings only and I could just manage it and no more. Uh, and it lasted me for two years and then the guitar teaching took, took over and I had to make the decision. Start saying no to lessons or give up the day job. So yeah, I gave up the day the day job, took the took the risk. And the guitar lessons worked out fine for the next however many years it was till I retired. That was me, five lessons a, a day. So everything worked out for the best. But that hint from an angel was really, really handy. Oh, and the Emmy. Well, 18 years to the day after I contracted that disease, on the Tuesday of the week of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, I woke up and it had gone and it's never ever been back. Now let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. God is our shelter and our strength times our eight. So even if the earth does shake, we shall not be afraid. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob, our high stronghold. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob, our high stronghold. Shout. 